the movie Eyes Wide Shut. The first time with it, probably horror-esque. You watch this 159 minute film and after the almost painfully long dialogues and the stinging musical undertones, you're done. And you just think, great, Tom Cruise and every woman likes to lie with him in this feverish dream for two and a half hours. A shambles, a work worthy of theater of the absurd, if it would even show that nudity at all. Heck, even the color grading is confusing. First red and warm, then blue and cold, then suddenly rather overly skin colored. How can this be the very last work of Stanley Kubrick, the greatest director of all time before his unfortunate death? I am aware that this last masterpiece that we got from Kubik didn't get the best reception. Because where other of his works are still on gigantic levels, a historical drama, a military horror of gigantic proportions or simply an existentialist abstract universal work, Eyes Wide Shut seems rather minimalistic. And I believe that this minimalism is actually tied to a certain element in particular. Cruz does nothing, he just learns. Cruz doesn't act, he observes. Not active, but passive, as in a dream. This is essentially the core theme of the film. The experience of a dream, just getting as close as possible to the ideal version of it all. It could never work that way in the realm of the realistic, but since I'm in a dream, my wishes come true. Well, whether or not the entire plot of the film really takes place in a dream world is up for debate. In order to delve deeper into these worlds, you need the original work. Because the inspiration for Eyes Wide Shut is a work by the Austrian author Arthur Schnitzler. He wanted to be able to interpret dreams more closely and simply better, which is why he writes his work Dream Story, in which the main protagonist Fridolin experiences very strange things in one peculiar night. He embarks on a journey of sexual pleasure and discovery. Pretty much Tom Cruise's character just from Vienna. However, what was so unique and, let's be honest, revolutionary for 1925 is Fridolin's abstruse passivity. If we examine this one night, we find surprisingly few instances where Fridolin actively chooses an action, other than delving deeper into his dream. Everything is served to him, as if on a silver platter. And this is precisely the essence of Impressionism. Capture impressions to evaluate them, but also simply to be enchanted by them. Whether Monet passionately tries to paint his water lilies and Satier creates complex harmonies, arranging them like an untamed river, Schnitzler, as a writer, likewise tries as creatively and uniquely as possible to portray his impressions. His impressions, or in this case the impressions of Fridolin. And this is where Sigmund Freud comes into play an Austrian psychologist and philosopher who dealt with the one part of the human mind that many people are not actually aware of, the subconscious. When Schnitzler presented his dream story to Freud, he was definitely enthusiastic about the description of human drives, the subconscious and the interpretation of dreams, all of which play a major role in the novella. 77 years later and Eyes Wide Shut came out more female emancipation, more intrigue, more saturation. What did this work by Kubrick do with the impressionistic power of the dream story? How does the film execute this free impressionism? Well, a very special difference between the adaption and the original is the addition of more characters. Sidney Pollack as Victor Ziegler behaves almost like a mediator between Tom Cruise and the many impressions like a man who maybe already knows a little too much and therefore wants to keep Cruz away from the impressions. In the book, well, in the book that intermediary doesn't exist. Fridolin is on his own and the final moment, the danger that even tries to threaten Fridolin's wife and child is managed by him alone. Nevertheless, something very crucial always happens in visual representations of art. We no longer have to imagine the different places, characters and colors. The impressions become visible. 
they become tangible and get their very own style. The blue light which emanates mysticism and even a slight menace fits perfectly with the dreams and visions in which the plot takes place, or at least is supposed to take place. The masks worn by members of the secret society at their secret cultic events are shown. And yes, they also look at least as chilling and horror-esque as they are described in the book, at least in my opinion. The city of New York evokes feelings of coldness and sadness in us, despite the many Christmas lights and neon signs. The viewer subconsciously gets various impressions from Tom Cruise. It also helps that the film was generally designed to be very open to interpretation. It wants the audience not to be satisfied with just only the many impressions. It wants the impressions to be discussed, interpreted and analyzed. For this reason, Eyes Wide Shut even goes one step further than Dream Story. Because the viewer is already being provided with all the tools to process the impression correctly, he only needs to let go to embark on a journey into the almost infinite world of dreams and illusions.